Welcome to the Score Podcast. Welcome again to the Score Podcast, where we always speak to the most innovative groundbreakers in the financial services industry. These days, it's tough sledding for the housing market. With interest rates up, supply down, and wide ranging industry layoffs, are there any reasons for optimism? I'm Jeff Richardson, host of the Score Podcast. When you add it all up, the U.S. housing market is responsible for anywhere between 15 and 18 percent of our gross domestic product. But that's even underplaying its value. Home equity enables wealth generation and wealth transfer, serves as collateral for small business loans, and helps pay for college educations. It provides all sorts of family financial benefits. So when the housing market struggles, the ripples can become waves. Today, we're joined by Chrissy Johnson, founder and CEO of Alignment Advisors, a New York-based advisory firm that coordinates housing policy efforts at the intersection of commerce and social change. Chrissy has over 15 years of experience driving policy change as a regulator and as a practitioner. Her diverse background includes working in government, housing finance, entrepreneurship, including roles with Rocket Company, you know, Rocket Mortgage, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Senators Elizabeth Warren and Al Franken, and she worked on President Obama's 2008 campaign. Chrissy, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Jeff. I'm excited to be here. So Chrissy, uh, you're known in the industry, for anybody who's listening, if you go to a mortgage industry conference, you're bound to see Chrissy on a panel talking about some of the key issues, but you're also known for leaning into these issues and developing collaborative solutions. So let's start there. What are the key issues facing the mortgage market today? I know that's kind of a broad question, but how do you uniquely solve them and what's going on with these salons you've talked to me about? Right now, I'm probably seeing three main themes around the key challenges facing us right now, also opportunities. So access can include things like what Vantage Score is doing with credit and rethinking how we measure a consumer's credit profile. Affordable supply is another example of getting people into homes that they can afford. And valuation, so the appraisal issue of figuring out what a home is worth versus what someone is willing to pay for that home based on the community around it. There's also sustainability, meaning the financial resilience that we are really going to need to get through this time. Rethinking things like forbearance, loss mitigation, and loan modification options, and also the credit and valuation issues that I mentioned before and access applying sustainability because we need to make sure that people are able to access their equity through refinancing options to get through these times as well. And then finally, responsible innovation. So we really need some creative solutions to these age-old problems that keep recycling, but we need these innovations to keep the consumer front and center at the same time. And I've been working on a lot of these issues, specifically around valuations currently with what you mentioned, the salon, which is a collaboration of people from across the industry. It includes consumer and civil rights advocates, industry participants from lenders to appraisal practitioners and others to think tanks out there and industry trade groups representing the thoughts and opinions of the entire industry. And some may consider them to be strange bedfellows, but that's really what makes it special is because people are authentically coming together to share their perspectives. We don't think that we're always going to agree on everything, but at least we are opening our ears and actually hearing each other to actually round out our perspective to better inform the decisions that these leaders are making. That's awesome. And you need to trademark that salon term. So just want to touch on something you just mentioned in that answer, innovation, which is a big topic of this podcast. There's, of course, examples out there of, of innovation in the mortgage market, either from lenders, servicers, or the GSEs. But generally speaking, the mortgage market isn't really known for its ability to adopt new technology and innovation are you starting to see that change? And if not, what needs to be done for the mortgage industry to become more nimble? The industry has kind of a history of being a bit of a barge in a canal when it comes to innovation, but eventually that barge did move. So I, I am holding out hope here. But part of it too is consumers are changing. You had mentioned that in the beginning, and that's really what Vantage Score is based on. When consumers change, their demands are going to change. So not only are the demographics of the incoming consumer changing, such as the different credit profiles, less access to generational wealth due to historic redlining, which means less down payment, et cetera, but even the ideas of home and family are changing. I mean, people are waiting a little bit longer to start families. With remote work, the ability to be more mobile 
people, makes them rethink what is a home. So the industry, like I said, and policies, quite frankly, need to respond to those demands and change. And there are some other amazing innovations out there, but the real estate market as a whole has been fairly reticent to that change. I do think in order to push for the mortgage industry to be more nimble and responsive to the change, it's going to require maybe some changes in policy so that they can better navigate the rules of the road and have more clarity about how their innovations may apply when it comes to federal rulemakings and regulatory issues. I also think that we probably need to incentivize some of those innovations more. A prime example of that, I believe, is the Neighborhood Homes Investment Act. It incentivizes a way to bridge the appraisal gap, and that incentivizes developers to invest in more affordable communities and more affordable home ownership. And we need to think of additional tax incentives like that to get innovations in there who want to, again, rethink the system so that they can better and more responsibly expand the access to those who haven't had access in the past. That's interesting, particularly on the demographic topic, which leads me to this question. So the lending industry, consumer lending industry broadly is preparing for shifts in the demographics of the United States and what borrowers look like in the future. But in particular, I think the mortgage market needs to really think about it because these loans, they last 30 years. I mean, it's the most complicated underwriting of a consumer loan I think that we have. So what are some of the keys to adapting to these changes? Well, just as consumers demand change in the market, I hope that the changing demands then of the responders to those consumer demands will also push change in policy. And that really comes down to what I mentioned before with our goals of the salon, and that's collaboration. Policymakers have a big, big role ahead of them. Like you said, a 30-year investment, and none of us have a crystal ball. So we're doing the best we can with the tools that we're given, but that's going to require industry practitioners coming together with the consumer advocates who are the boots on the ground, talking to consumers with the policymakers to advance the change that is hopefully very data-driven. That's another key thing. We need more data and information to better inform the decisions that we're making forward. And when we think we have an answer, I think we need to have the bravery to move forward and the humility to constantly check for any unintended consequences to ensure that we're not recycling bad habits such as bias from the past. But let's have the bravery to move forward, the humility to check ourselves while working through the collaboration and the data that develops the best solutions. That's awesome. And, you know, I think in your answers, but in particular that answer, we can hear your passion for your work and promoting housing equality. But what's fueled that passion? I mean, why is it housing for you? My friend Lisa Rice at National for Housing Alliance taught me this years ago. She said it to me just once and it stuck in my brain and I repeat it every day. And it's this fact that where you live matters, which means like home ownership channels the benefits that affect a human's quality of life. Wherever you grow up, you can remember your neighborhood. Where did your parents go to get money? Was it at the bank or was it at a payday lender? What was your education like? Did you feel safe going to the school? bus? Did you have a grocery store nearby? Where was your nearest doctor? Like I said, that came down to where you live. It matters. It informs then as you continue in life, your foundation of your values, how you make your decisions for yourself and for the people you love, for your family. And this is the bundle of privileges that comes with owning a home and being part of a community. This country really was built in a way where your participation in democracy is wrapped up in your ability to own property. And I really do believe that every American deserves the chance to be a participant in the democracy that this country was built on. And if that means owning property in a place where you know where you're going to get your food, you know where you're going to go to the doctor, you know that you feel safe going to the school bus, all those things, then I think fundamentally we all deserve that. Well, Chrissy, let's leave it there. Those were very poignant words and messages. Where you live does matter. Thank you, Chrissy. You're clearly passionate about this, and we thank you for promoting housing equality and wish you all the luck with your great work. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me on. You're doing such wonderful work. It is an honor to be by your side. Every market has its cycles, and we're in a challenging one for mortgage originators, servicers, and yeah, buyers and sellers too. The top five lenders combined trim close to $1.5 billion worth of expenses in the second quarter to keep their shops afloat, according to SEC filings as reported in a recent National Mortgage News article. 
That said, those that do prioritize preparing for the future, adapting new innovations, and focusing on demographic shifts are likely to emerge as winners. I'm Jeff Richardson, and I look forward to our next conversation. The views and opinions expressed in this episode do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of VantageScore Solutions. Visit VantageScore.com to learn more.